Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with the Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can enjoy the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so we are actually already on almost all the way through September and into October, which is my favorite season of the year, spooky season. So we're going to do a slightly spooky painting today uh, with one of my favorite animals, which is a raven and the gorgeous big full moon in the background. We're going to start with a beautiful sunset gradation. Uh, and I have my four standard brushes for this class that I use. That's from my special brush kit. So I have a large square brush, medium sized pointed brush here, and then two small detail brushes. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. And then my beautiful sunset colors that I'm going to start today's background stuff with. I have yellow, orange, red, some violet, some black, and a little bit of white. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use and recommend, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, I'm going to grab my largest square brush and I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of water on that brush to help the acrylic paint go nice and smooth. I'm going to mix up my first lightest color of my gradation, which is going to be a yellow orange. So that's just my yellow and orange together. I'm going to go across the bottom part of my canvas with that beautiful vibrant color. Plenty of paint, a little bit of water, filling it into that canvas texture. I am using a canvas board today. I don't recommend using paper with acrylic. It's a little bit too heavy bodied to hold up. So I'm using that acrylic board today. Very economical, cost effective, but canvas, boxed canvas works great as well. Okay, a little bit of light orange there coming up from the bottom and then we're going to just do regular orange to help us on our way further up along our gradation here okay just orange as it is we're blending our beautiful yellow orange into true orange okay just like so going in between there don't be afraid this is really good blending practice and that's what this painting is all about for the first part here at least rinsing a little bit of orange out of my brush and now i'm going to mix up a yellow orange so that's just going to be orange mixed with my red did i say yellow orange i meant red orange That's gonna be just about the center here. Pulling that down a little bit and blending that all nicely together here. Look at that, beautiful. Okay. Rinsing the majority of the color there and then we're going to mix a little bit of red into some purple and I like to sneak a little bit of white into the purple as well. I'm going to put that right in between the red orange and the top part there and then you can use a little bit of red purple there in between to blend it together. You can use as many in-between colors as you need, or you can really just go right from red to purple. Look at how pretty that looks. Okay, regular purple, little sneak of white in there. Just to make that purple nice and vibrant. Okay, I'm pretty much all the way at the top. And here's where you want to sneak a little bit of black in. We don't want to go too far down with the dark color because this is a silhouette. So we want to be able to see our trees and our raven nice and clear later. But we do want to have sort of that beginning of night feel. Perfect. Okay, nice dark purple 
right along the top. Beginning of night, creeping in. Just like so, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull that down into my purple to blend it, just like all the previous colors. Looking really nice. add any second layers of color that you might need as well so if you need to bring any more of one color in so like sneaking some more purple in there you can do that but once you have a nice blended sunset gradation and it looks pretty good say that's not just good it's good enough and step away for a minute we're going to let this layer dry fully and then we're going to come back for more after break, so I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, artists, we're back. I have an almost dry background. I just wanted to add another layer of purple and a little bit of my darker purple too. I'm just seeing sort of more like a watercolor look when I want it to be really saturated. So I just wanted to be fully transparent with my process here and show you guys every step. So I am going to add just a little bit more purple as a second coat and you can add any other colors that you might want as well if you need to add some red to help blend it that works as well just not too much water just want to have a lot of coverage there there we go and it's going to go darker a little bit as well up top Just for a little bit more of that Halloween full purple with the orange. I think that looks good. Okay, blending that together just like before. But as you can see, that second coat I think really made things a lot more vibrant. Same idea. Here with the red, blend it in with the purple a little bit. Okay. And I don't want to overwork it. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to be patient and let this layer dry one more time before we come in with our moon. Okay, so just a few more minutes. All right. <laughs> okay, welcome back artists. We have a 95% dry background and I got some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper. So this time I just have white, a little bit of ultramarine blue and some black. This is going to be a sort of in-between layer and I actually have a little bit of my kind of purplish red and purple still a tiny bit wet on my background and those are gonna blend slightly with the white moon and I'm gonna kind of try to work with that since I did that in my original and I just liked how it ended up. So I'm gonna grab my medium sized brush and some white and I'm going to do a big circle for my moon shape. And that was pretty circular, my first try. <laughs> and I'm going to start filling this in and on one side is going to be pretty clean white. You're gonna get a little bit of that background color there in it. I'm going to start just filling in a fair amount of my moon just with white and a little bit of sort of brushstroke texture. So I'm sort of moving my brush from side to side here. And that's on that side. And then on the other side, I'm gonna make a little bit of a bluish gray. Okay, and I'm going to take this around the other side for a little bit of roundness. Now that was a little bit dark, so I added a little bit more white right back in, and I'm going to work my way over to the white side. And the idea here is that we want to make it circular looking. 
Okay. A little bit of blue gray mixing in with that sort of pink color. And just making sure it's as circular as I can get it. Okay. And in some areas it's going to be smooth and then in other areas you want to make it look like a crater surface. Okay, so little circles. Just finessing my circular shape here. Trying to make it as circular as I can. And then just working in a little bit of texture with some roundness for the craters sort of random, kind of here and there. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue. You can kind of work it until you feel like it's looking pretty good. A little bit of shadow texture in that same round way. Strokes, little circular craters. Here we go. It's looking about right. You want to have that background just the right amount of dry. Not pull too much color in, just the right amount. Okay, rinsing my brush a little bit. I think it's a little too pink. So I'm just gonna take some white in in a couple more places. Just use plenty of paint right on top. Okay. And just kind of playing with it back and forth my colors, playing with the gray in the white area, pulling the white over into the gray. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to just take a little bit more gray over to this side. bit further out than I wanted so I'm just going to finesse my shape a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think a few more little crater marks here with the gray. Okay, I think I'll let that dry. I might add a little bit more white once it's dry before we move on with our final silhouette step. But we do want to let this dry so that when we put our crow and our trees on, it doesn't pull all the white through. So let's be patient and step away one more time and let this layer dry and we'll come back with the final step. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a fully dry background this time. I have my same three colors still on my piece of palette paper and I am going to just put a little bit more of that nice light sort of bluish gray color into my moon as well as adding a little bit more white as well in just a second. I just want to tone down those background colors a little bit and get that blue moon feel. Oh, there we go. And I 
just have a little bit of white I'm using my medium sized brush here but you can use your smaller brush if you would prefer just putting some final touches there on that moon shape just wanted a little bit of that background color okay that looks perfect just how i want it okay and now i'm going to retire that brush and i'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush and we're going to start with our silhouette work so i'm just going to be using black as is and we're going to start with the trees while we give our moon just another second to dry so the two trees are going to be on either side of my moon here and i'm just going to start with the main sort of trunk and i'm going to gently wiggle my way down the whole canvas and i like to start with one brush stroke and then i'll come back and thicken it up a little bit just like so just bringing it all the way down a little bit thicker at the bottom always starting small that way you can always make it bigger harder to make it smaller okay that's looking good I'm going to do a couple branches coming off the sides now and I'm also just going to kind of wiggle my way making not a straight line but not too crazy of a curve either they want to, you want them to be a little bit different and I'm going to also have some of these branches that are just going to come up and kind of taper away including my main sort of focal point branch which is going to have my little raven upon it so this is an important one and we want to bring that branch all the way out to our moon and then connect it back to the tree so I'm kind of eyeballed where I'm wanting to go tapering gently and then connecting to the tree once again starting slim and then thickening it up a little bit towards the base Okay, and then maybe an additional little branch coming off the side and I'm coming in to overlap the moon just for a little bit of interest we're gonna have our little crow friend right there I'm gonna do a branch coming downwards over here as well I like to not have too many branches for these trees and that gives it sort of more of the spooky look and it's just a little bit simpler composition but you can add more branches if you'd like as well you should just kind of build your tree as you like with that in mind that we're keeping that little space right there for our raven Raven or crow, depending on where you're at in the world. Okay, thickening up that just a little bit more. And now I'm just going to do a sort of balancing tree on the other side. Just like so. Gentle, light brush stroke texture. nice solid line a little bit of water always and just pulling that down to the bottom just like the other side but a little bit different not a mirror image just two trees in the same forest and same idea, I want to overlap a little bit of my moon just to create a little interest. 
some interaction there with our composition as if we were a photographer that just snapped this opportune moment. Almost got a drip there. Paper off some branches coming from either side and just build our tree. Okay, looking good. If you are painting along today, I do want to mention that I have a Facebook group called the Art Club that's specifically designed for my students to share their work. I love to see it. It can be your art that you created from painting along with me or just from your own imagination. I would love to have you join us over there and there's a link in the description box below to join that as well. I also have a course on color theory on Skillshare if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to blend colors and how to create color compositions, sort of like the one we have today. And I have a link for a free month on Skillshare for my students also in that description box. So you can actually check that course out for free right now if you'd like to and watch a bunch of other great stuff on Skillshare at the same time. All right, that's looking like a pretty good forest. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, I think I'm going to grab my small brush now and come in with the piece de la resistance, which is going to be our raven. And also just gonna be working with black. I'm going to start with the body of the raven is sort of a triangular shape and we're going to just place him right off center uh, with a gorgeous moon backdrop. I'm going to start with this sort of triangular almost kite type shape but like so and then I'm going to build the head from there and the beak. Maybe I'll do the beak first as a little line and then up for the head and around connecting to the body very slim beak and then coming in and around to connect to the body and then as we fill this in kind of finesse the shape. And fill out any area that might need it. Thickening up the neck a little bit. Always starting smaller than I think I need to be. from there making the head a little bit rounder okay I might bring his shoulder out a little bit more as well connect legs here to the branch just getting that nice and clean and we'll just have kind of just one leg there and then I'm going to have a couple tail feathers coming sort of from 
that direction and then the other coming out like so. With a few more. And then you just kind of adjust that shape as needed. His beak is a little too curved. You can put any other final touches that you'd like on your painting. But we're keeping it simple today with this composition. I think that's looking pretty cute. Not quite as good as my original. <laughs> it's always harder to talk while I'm painting. But I still think he looks pretty cute and he's spooky and Halloween feeling, so I like it. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club and please check out that Skillshare link if you want to try out Color Theory 101 for free on Skillshare. That is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So please hit like if you like this painting and until next time, stay creative.